International trade isn't just about exchanging goods and services across borders. There's something else that travels with every shipment. Carbon emissions. Every time a product is made, energy is used and that energy leaves a carbon footprint. When goods cross borders, carbon emissions travels along with them. So when developed countries juggle with their growing dependence on imports while trying to clean up their carbon emission accounts, they are looking for ways to regulate the emissions embedded in the products they import. This is where the carbon border adjustment mechanism comes into play. A regulatory tool designed to address the carbon emission embedded in imported goods. So before we delve deep into the topic, let's start with the basics. What is CBAM and why does it matter? Hello, my name is Trishan Dev and I work as a program officer in the climate change program at the Center for Science and Environment. The Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism or CBAM is a border carbon pricing system adopted by the European Union in 2023. In simple terms, it places a price on imported goods based on the greenhouse gas emissions produced during their manufacture. The objective is to ensure a level playing field by applying the carbon cost to imports when a similar carbon pricing mechanism exists within the EU through its domestic carbon market, the EU ETS. The idea is to prevent domestic producers from being disadvantaged in comparison to their imported counterparts and to avoid carbon leakage. This occurs when industries relocate to regions with weaker environmental regulations due to rising carbon prices in their home country. But how will CBAM be actually measured and reported? Introduced as a part of the EU's broader Fit for 55 initiative, CBAM initially covers key sectors such as iron and steel, aluminium, cement, fertilizer, hydrogen and electricity, with plans to expand it further to other sectors over time. The CBAM process started in October 2023. EU importers were mandated to report emission data for their imports every quarter. For now, Importers can measure and report emissions using existing methods used in the exporting country or through a third-party verified process. After December 2024, they must use EU-approved methods based on measuring activity data or continuously checking greenhouse gas levels. Starting in 2026, importers will be required to purchase certificates to cover the emissions associated with imports these certificates represent a unit ton of carbon emission and are similar to the instruments utilized in the carbon markets, such as the EU ETS. A study by the Asian Development Bank finds that the CBAM might reduce global emissions by only 0.2% with a 100 euro per ton carbon price and 0.37% with a 200 euro per ton price. Nonetheless, it is anticipated to significantly disrupt global trade, resulting in a 1.1% reduction in Asia's exports to the EU. By value, this reduction is more than what the entire South Asia exports to the European Union. But let's look at how this could impact India. In the fiscal year 2022-2023, India's export of CBAM covered goods to the EU made up nearly 9.91% of its total exports to the EU. This is about 0.2% of India's GDP for that year and represents around 25.7% of India's global exports on those sectors. Looking at trade data over three years, CSE estimates that if the CBAM rate is 100 euro per ton of CO2, it would add an average tax of 25% on CBAM covered goods exported to the European Union. However, the broader implications of CBAM extend beyond these figures. 
Over the past two decades, OECD countries have shifted from producing emissions to importing them. Despite outsourcing emissions, the EU's per capita emissions in 2019 were three times India's and 43 times Ethiopia's. This raises the question, who bears the cost of decarbonization? Developing countries with generally higher emission intensities in sectors like steel and aluminium face increased costs of decarbonization. The administrative demands such as measuring carbon content will make it harder for smaller enterprises in such countries to compete globally. Furthermore, by applying the same punitive measures to all countries, CBAM violates the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. The complexities and potential inequities of CBAM highlight the urgent need for a more balanced and supportive approach. Here are some key recommendations by CSE in this regard. Number 1. The European Union expects CBAM to bring in about 1.5 billion euros annually. It should channel back this revenue to the developing countries to support clean energy in low-income nations. Number 2. Exporting countries could implement a domestic carbon tax on exports. This would help meet CBAM's requirements while keeping revenues in-country. Number 3. Industries in emerging economies could diversify production processes. For example, they could use greener methods for exports to regions with CBAM while maintaining traditional processes for markets where price is more critical. Number 4. To effectively use CBAM revenues or climate finance, developing countries should create detailed sectoral plans. These plans will ensure that the support aligns with their specific needs and avoids top-down solutions that might not fit. The last but an important solution that we propose is developing countries may impose a historical polluter fee on trading partners based on their historical CO2 share. This approach could address the unfairness of CBAM-like policies by considering past emissions that are currently not taken into account.